Hello everybody, I'm Gary Jackson and I'm just here today to talk to you about dog trainers toolkits and methodology on fixing different problems in dogs. Now, if I just start with pulling a problem out of thin air and let's say for example, you have a dog which is reactive, it wants to aggress other dogs and you have problems with it and then you look at the methods to be able to do it. Now, as a trainer, as a professional dog trainer, as well as with the experience, you've got a toolbox with all these tools in it. Now, when we look at some of the things that we can actually use to be able to fix individual problems, we have RSPCA used choke rope, we've got pinch collars, ECs or electric collars for with a remote control, you have muzzles, you have collars, and you have check chains, and there's many, many more. So we have, for example, uh, approximately 10 items at least in our toolkits. And for the methods, we might have, for a method of uh, fixing animal aggression, there might be 20 individual methods that we can actually use. Now, when we get the information on the dog and we do the evaluation, our methods will start coming down from 20 to 10 to 15 or whatever it is, until it comes down to the ones that we're going to use. Now let's say, for example, the dog is um, a strong character working dog lines, then those methods of 20, we can eliminate five out of there and probably three tools. And then from there you find out that the dog has had absolutely no socialization at all. So the dog's a strong character dog, unsocialized, and is a bit paranoid about the outside world. So that's the next one. Then we find out that the owner took the dog as a young male or a young pup down to the um, disease-ridden canine fight club up I'm being council dog free park and the dog got bit on the ass by another dog. So now the dog is paranoid of other dogs. He's reacting with aggression and we got to fix it. Now the best way to fix it is to make sure that you've got a massive toolbox of dog training tools that you can use and a massive amount of methods. Now when you have all that, I can actually start eliminating a lot of the methodology till I get the top three methods and the top tools that I'm going to use and this is going to give the dog the best possible chance of being able to resolve the problems and fix the reactivity so if for example you are not um, don't have a toolbox that big or that many methods you might be a politically correct dog trainer now if you're politically correct we just have to go back and have a look at what's happened to the children i mean now a child can actually go down the hallway with crayons put crayons all over the wall and and you go oh look at that Oh, he's expressing himself. Oh, he's got big feelings. There are so many things that are happening there. And how's that working out for you with the kids? Now we end up with undisciplined, overprivileged, screaming semen demons. And this is all a result of political correctness. This has crept its way into the dog industry and now it's slowly taking over. And what that means is that you want to use a check chain? Can't use a bloody check chain. Pinch collar? No, you might as well stab them in the throat with this. No, that's can't use that at all. Can't use that. This one here, get the hell out of here. You can't use one of them. It's 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 gonna have sparks coming out the dog's ass. Um, so there's all these things that you can't use because of the political correctness. It all has to be 100 percent positive and that's it and as a result those 10 tools you've got in the toolkit is now brought down to three the dog trainer and some food and, and probably another one okay now as far as the methods go you have 20 methods and you start ticking them off the list no can't use that one can't use this one can't use that one that one's not very sciencey no can't use that one can't use that one and now your methods have gone down to three so in the political correct way you've got two methods or three methods you can use, and one, two, you might just use this. And more than likely on a dog which I just described, it will fail. And when it does fail, you're going to say, oh, okay, well, we can't do anything. We've done everything we feel comfortable with and the dog's not responding. So you're gonna to have to come back for another lesson. And then from there, this starts. Another lesson, another lesson, another lesson. So what could have been fixed in a matter of like two sessions, may take 10 or 12 sessions. 
that's up to you. So when you have a problem with the dog and that, go see a trainer which has a full toolkit and full methods. And one of the things that you don't wanna have is where people say this one method fits all because that is absolute rubbish. We know this will work on some dogs, but not on all of them. It's not a one method fits all. So when you've got the methods and the tools and the knowledge, you can choose between many methods to get the best results out of the dog, not just tunnel vision that here's a Scooby snack and that's it. Anyway, food for thought. Have a good day. I'm Gaz.